Welcome back, and this is my failed attempt at landing a Ryanair aircraft in the storm. No, this is not Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is Kerbal Space Program in 2024. This new series will teach you about the best KSP visual mods, so that you can have a masterpiece of a game on your hands. And this is episode 1. For each episode we look at 4-5 to five mods based on a common theme. The theme of today is the most popular visual mods according to the YouTube video trends and my own experience as well. Let's begin with True Volumetric Clouds. Many of you already probably know this mod and the developer Blackrack has been working also in KSP2. This is a mod for players who want one of the biggest improvements possible in the game when it comes to visuals and aesthetic. Because this mod adds volumetric clouds to the atmospheric planets and Kerbin gets its own weather, Duna has its own dust storms, and Lathe has its own weather as well, but also Eve and Jewel have their own clouds moving around, with lightning for example. Now what do I like about this mod? I like the realism and the sheer quality that this mod adds together with the freedom to literally control the weather, which is like being a god of the sky. I dislike about this mod the paid aspect because it deters a big chunk of the KSP player base from trying it out obviously but I don't think it's a deal breaker because it's still cheap at about $5 and at the end of the day I'm happy to show my support for the hard work that modders put which should hopefully motivate them to continue working in that same direction. Let's talk about the mod dependencies. So this mod requires scatterer, sc uh, stock scatterer configs installed as well, and environmental visual enhancements. This mod conflicts with other mods that include clouds in their packages, such as Spectra, Astronomer's Visual Pack, Stock Visual Enhancements, and any other mods that work in a similar way. The size of this mod is medium to large at 633 megabytes. It's available on Patreon for download as its only uh, access accessible way, really. The way you can install this mod is in fact to join Blackrack's Patreon for $5 a month. You can just do that for a single month if you don't want to spend more than $5. But it will give you access to the link of the download file of this mod. Then you just go on your game data of the downloaded file you have and you drag the contents into your game data folder of your KSP game. How do I rate this mod? My rating for this mod is a solid 9 out of 10 because it adds everything I want for the atmosphere of planets that is missing in the stock game. And it's something that everyone should try once. Plus, you get to be the god of the weather when you use the, the editor window, and that is really badass. What is missing from this mod, I think, is the Aurora Borealis, but Blackrack is working on that, so we might soon see that come into this mod. But there's also other things that could be added, such as the fact that the clouds from space look a little puffy, a little weird. So maybe that fixed, but it's just subjective. It would be cool to see tornadoes, maybe hurricanes that spin around, or even rainbows after a storm has passed. So there's still a few improvements here and there, but overall, a solid 9 out of 10. The second mod we need to talk about is Turd, or Textures Unlimited Recoloring Depot, with 438,000 downloads on Seacan alone. Now this mod is made up by two mods together, which is Textures Unlimited, and stock recolor. Now, this mod is amazing in my opinion because it unlocks a whole new layer of aircraft and spaceship customization without changing the same stock vibe of the parts in the game. One of the coolest things is the possibility of making a color theme by saving a preset and applying it to every other part to make a vehicle look very sharp. And also, you get the chance to add reflective surfaces for a metallic appearance of the pieces of your vehicles. Now what can players do? Well, they can literally recolor any parts from the stock game, and not only that, there's also uh, configs that you can download to be able to recolor the Mark III extension, the Airplane Plus, the BD Armory, and so on. Now what do I like about this mod in general? It's that you can go beyond simple recoloring. You can add a lot of reflecting effects, and even translucent ones with the additional glass config file that I have. So I dislike about this mod the absence of a config file for making it work with restock parts mod, which means that for now you cannot recolor the restock parts as far as I'm aware. It is a shame. It would be cool if it was possible not only to repaint these parts, but instead to paint parts in general as if you were drawing them by hand or with a spray can. That would be amazing. I don't know if it's technically possible, but it would be cool. Something that I want to add 
that I think would be awesome is also the possibility to make parts glow different colors like neon, to make vehicles light up in the darkness. Now that is something I can only imagine how cool it would be. What dependencies does this mod have? It only depends on module manager, so that's fairly simple. You can find it on Seacan, for example. It doesn't conflict with anyone in particular, but it does require additional configs for you to download if you want to be able to paint procedural wings, the BD Armory parts, the Mark II or Mark III expansion, etc. So there's that. The size of this mod is medium-large at 557 megabytes, which is made up of Textures Unlimited and Stock Recolor, which are the two sub-mods that make up Turd. And it's available to download only on the Kerbal Space Program forum page, so not on Seacan, unfortunately. How do you install it? Well, it's a bit different. You just want to go on the Turd pay, uh, page of the KSP forum, then you click Stock Recolor, the link, and you extract the contents, obviously, and you just drag Textures Limited and Stock Recolor and you put them in your game data. Done. Fairly simple, huh? What do I rate this mod? I would rate it a solid 8 out of 10 because it has a really fun layer of customization and freedom and the coloring patterns follow the stock shapes, which makes the result quite satisfying and believable. Nothing really is inherently wrong about this mod, but I think that there is some missing potential that more config files could be added to include glowing parts or some files that allow you to paint the restock parts. That would be really awesome. The third mod that I want to talk about is called Lazy Painter. Now this mod is more of an add-on or an upgrade for Turd, the previous mod I just talked about, because it adds a different user interface to the coloring window that you would get with Turd. In fact, it only has 3,700 downloads on Seacan, which is tiny, but it's even if it's not the most popular mod here, it enhances one of the biggest mods out there. Another aspect about Lazy Painter is that it adds ability to change the colors of your vehicle while you are in flight in the game, which is something you can't do with Turd alone. So that's cool. And what do I like exactly about this mod? Well, it, that it makes it a bit easier to understand and it speeds up the process of painting very large crafts, so it's very useful if you have important projects. I like that you can try changing the color of your vehicles while in flight to see how they look under different conditions, so it's generally a useful tool to have. I don't dislike anything about it honestly because it doesn't even add that much and it's a very small mod. Now what does it depend on? It depends on Textures Unlimited, again, there's no, nothing that really conflicts with it as far as Textures Unlimited does work. The size of this mod is tiny, it's 52.4 kilobytes. kilobytes. And it's available on Seacan to download, so it's very easy. Open your Seacan, set the search filter to compatible mods, type Lazy Painter, click that little uh, square, that blue tick, and bam, you have it installed. How would I rate this mod? I would give it a 7 out of 10 because it's good at improving the user interface, and it can save you time when painting large projects, but it doesn't really change your entire experience like other mods in this list. The fourth mod I want to talk about is called Restock, and I'm sure many of you already know this mod. Well, it has beyond 8,000 downloads on Seacan alone, so it's massive, it's really popular, and it's made to revamp the aesthetic of the stock parts in KSP, and it offers a more consistent style without altering the gameplay significantly. And the objective, of course, is to move KSP into a direction of more realistic looking crafts, where they might look more like the counterparts in real life, which is quite good, I would say. Well, there is a problem, and that is that this mod actually does change the physics of some of the parts in the game, even if just slightly, and this was discovered by the legend himself, Veos, a year back when I uploaded my micro SSL record attempt, and he made a much smaller one, which would have made his record valid if it weren't that he was using restock parts. So initially nobody thought about it, but then some players tried making his micro SSTO with the actual stock parts and it wasn't working, it wasn't going to orbit. So this event basically exposed the little secret that restock keeps hidden. And it's that it doesn't really, ch it does change, even if slightly, the physics of the parts. And it's something that will not bother most players, but it's something that makes crafts made on restock unable to participate to contests, for example, because they have slightly different flight behaviors. And that's also the reason why I don't usually have restock installed. What does restock depend on? Again, it only depends on module manager, so quite simple to manage the whole thing. 
It does suggest, for example, that you could install Restock Plus so you get even more parts that look kind of cool and realistic. It does conflict with Venn's Stock Parts Revamp mod. The size of this mod is also medium to large at 648.9 megabytes and it's available on Seekin. So the installation is quite easy at this point, I think you know how it works. Now, unfortunately, I would give Restock about a 6.5 out of 10. Now let's talk about the last mod of today, Parallax 2.0. Oh, this is a good one. This is the largest of all the mods listed today and it's worth trying. I would say only with a decent graphics card. This mod has over a million downloads on Seekan alone and it rebu rebuilds the surface of planets by adding a much more detailed surface with a new scatter system and your terrain will look a lot more realistic for, from any distance, from even space. Um, so depending on the planet you visit, you will see different elements on the surface like grass, trees, giant red crystals, bioluminescent soil, strange bubbles and a lot of cool rocks for you geologist nerds like me. So this big mod is GPU head and the footage you see is shot with the Radeon RX 6700 XT GPU which runs on 12GB of VRAM and it's considered a medium range performance, um, you know, GPU between an RTX 3060 Ti and an RTX uh, 3070 to give you a broader idea. And this mod will still work with older GPUs like on my laptop's GTX 1650 which only has 4GB of video RAM. So, but the frame rate lost there is noticeable and not worth it in my experience. What can players do exactly? Well, this mod makes everything about exploration much more realistic and interesting. So, just build a rover and start your adventure. What do I dislike about this mod? Well, about this mod, I dislike that it has a strong cost on the performance of the game. It is notable but bearable on mid-range GPUs today, but it's something that players have to decide for themselves based on their equipment. Now what I do like, there is a lot to say, because what this mod adds is just realism, a lot of realism. I like the attitude that the creators of this mod have, because on their official forum page they answer a lot of questions and offer real answers. Another thing I really appreciate is that the modders allow you to manually tweak the settings of Parallax in the config fi text file. So you can switch on and off, the ability to collide with the tiny rocks, but most importantly you can tweak the level of graphic detail that you want, so that you can actually optimize Parallax based on your needs. And finally, I really like that the modders of Parallax are rewriting, adapting their mod to fit better with the development of other mods in KSP right now, with an example being Blackrack's Deferred Lighting mod, which is going to change the way KSP looks and improve the performance at the same time, so stay tuned for that. Now what dependencies does Parallax 2.0 have? That is the mod Copernicus. It also suggests on Seekan that you run it with Scatterer, which is most people know at this point what Scatterer is. And this mod has no known conflicts. Well, there would be deferred lighting when that mod is released before it's upgraded, with, before Parallax 2 becomes up upgraded again to become compatible with it. The size of this mod is humongous, that's 4.1 gigabytes. Now we're talking about almost the size of stock KSP, which is like 4.3. So you, you are almost installing another KSP, so that's a big mod. And I rate it 8.5 out of 10, because I think it changes the game significantly. Like if True Volumetric Clouds and Scatterer are the supreme mods of the air and the water, right? Parallax would be the ultimate Earth mod. So I think that kind of, I hope that makes sense. This mod does offer a great deal of visual improvements in the area of planet Texas, but yeah, it does come at fair cost. But I can tell that the modders behind this project are truly passionate KSP fans. So it does transpire on their work. And I'll continue following with interest what they come up with next. And it is time to end today's video. I hope you have enjoyed today's mods and the way I explained them. And I will see you in the next episode of this lovely series. Cheers!